difference. No, there is not a contradiction here. Let's read it very carefully and see what God's Word actually says. In 1 Kings, it tells us Solomon had 40,000 stalls of horses for his chariots. Does that verse tell me how many chariots he had? No. It tells me how many horses he had for his chariots, right? Now, this one says Solomon had 4,000 stalls for horses and chariots. Now we know how many chariots he had. They had 10 horses per chariot. So if he had 40,000 stalls of horses for his chariots, he would need 4,000 chariots, 10 horses per chariot. You can see the same thing in 2 Samuel chapter 10. The Syrians fled before Israel, and David slew the men of 700 chariots. Does that tell me how many men he slew? No. He slew the men of 700 chariots. When you read the same story in 1 Chronicles chapter 19, verse 18, it says, David slew of the Syrians 7,000 men which fought in chariots. And again, people say, well, this is a copyist error in the King James. No, it's not a copyist error. It was fine, just like it's written. They had 10 men and 10 horses per chariot because the chariot was the tank of the day. And you carry spare men and spare horses in case you get a flat tire in battle. You can swap horses or swap soldiers out. So, no, there's not a copyist error. Many new versions, though, have tried to correct God's Word only to make it wrong. If you look at the NIV, what they did with this, they say Solomon had 4,000 stalls, four chariot horses, and 12,000 horses. Now, wait a minute. He had 12,000 horsemen, not 12,000 horses. And you read the NIV down in 2 Chronicles 9. It says Solomon had 4,000 stalls, four horses, and chariots. They totally messed it up. That wouldn't work. You have to have 10 horses per chariot. You can't have one horse per chariot, not if you're going to go into battle, because one arrow takes out your whole chariot. You had 10 horses and 10 men per chariot. In the uh, <clears throat> New American Standard, they got it right. Solomon had 40,000 stalls of horses for his chariots, and down in Second Chronicles, Solomon had 4,000 stalls for horses and chariots. Yay, we got this version, got it right. But if you look at the New Revised Standard Version, they got it wrong. <clears throat> They say Solomon had 40,000 stalls of horses for his chariots. And down in the first, second Chronicles chapter 9, Solomon had 4,000 stalls, four horses, and chariots, and 12,000 horses. Whereas in 1 Kings, it has 12,000 horsemen. They blew it. Here they are trying to fix God's word, and it didn't need fixed. Okay, it was fine like it was. When you look at the NIV, they got it wrong. David killed 700 of their charioteers and 40,000 of their foot soldiers in 2 Samuel. If you look down to 1 Chronicles, it says David killed 7,000 of their charioteers. Now, this is an obvious contradiction. I think you'd find in a lot of the newer versions, it's easy to find many contradictions. But if you stick with the King James, I don't think you'll be able to find one that you can prove is a real contradiction in the Bible. When you look at the Revised Standard Version, they got it right. 700 chariot teams and 40,000 horsemen. <clears throat> and then they said David killed 7,000 Armenian charioteers, which would be 10 men per chariot, but they got it wrong in the last part, 40,000 foot soldiers. Second Samuel said 40,000 horsemen. They messed it up. They got part of it right and part of it wrong. They messed it up. They should have just left it alone. We've got a book that we sell at our ministry called Errors in the King James Bible by Peter Ruckman, who lives here in Pensacola. And though he's a little rude and crude and harsh on folks, you know, in his uh, mannerisms, I think his, his um, teaching is right on this topic, okay? He's got it right. There are no contradictions in God's Word. Some people have said, well, the Bible has a contradiction because it says the rabbit chews the cud and rabbits don't chew the cud. Well, yes, they do, okay? You need to read the uh, Creation Science, uh, Creation Magazine article, September 98, on page 56. The rabbits do eat their food, swallow it, digest it partly, goes through, comes back out, they pick it up and eat it again. So they are re-chewing that which was chewed before. Yes, they do chew the cut. One scoffer said, well, there's a contradiction in the Bible because it says in Genesis chapter 10, the earth was divided up by languages, and when you get to chapter 11, it says the whole earth was of one language. Well, duh, this is going back and recapping the story, okay? Newspapers do this all the time. The headline says, 10,000 people killed in an earthquake in Armenia. 
Then you read in the newspaper, done in the story, it says, you know, people were going about, going about their daily duties headed for breakfast. Wait a minute, I thought the title said 10,000 were killed. They're going to retell the story with more details. So this is not a contradiction. This is normal, normally the way everybody writes a book. Okay, a flashback, so it's not a problem at all. Numbers chapter 25 says, And those that died in the plague were twenty and four thousand. When you read this same story in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 10, it tells us, Neither let us commit fornication, as some of them committed, and fell in one day three and twenty thousand. And the scoffers will say, Ah, see the contradiction here? Number says 24,000 died. 1 Corinthians says 23,000 died. Anybody have an answer to this one? Is there a contradiction here? No, there's no contradiction. Look at it. 24,000 died in the plague, right? 1 Corinthians tells us 23,000 died in one day. So guess what? A thousand died the next day. <laughs> it's not a contradiction at all. God's word was right, just like it says. Next question. How did they have days before the sun was created on day four? Well, that's a good question. I get asked this a lot. People like Hugh Ross will say, see, this is proof that the sun was already there for millions of years. Well, you need to get our long debate series we have with Hugh Ross, uh, a whole package of tapes for $78. You can get that. But here's the story. In Genesis chapter 1, verse 3, God said, let there be light. Now, in English, we have one word, light, that really means two different things. I would say, would you please turn on the light? But what does the light produce? It produces light. We've got one word that means two things. It means the source of the light, and it means the light itself. The Hebrew language has two words. They have the Hebrew word or, which means the light. Then they have the Hebrew word meor, which means the light source. So here God is creating the light on Genesis 1, verse 3 and 4. He to divide the light from the darkness. When you get to verse 5, God called the light, that's just the light itself, not the light source. He called it day. That's or, Hebrew word or. When you come to verse 14, God said, let there be lights. This is the Hebrew word meor, which means the light giver. So now, God is making the light giver, 